Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray you're all well. Okay, let's resume. Al Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Al Rahman Al Rahim. Al Rahim. Al Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima 'allamtana wa amnahna ya rabbana 'ilman wa 'amalan wa qurban ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma akrimna wa la tuhinna wa a'tina wa la tahrimna wa athirna wa la tu'thir 'alaina wa ardina wa ardu 'anna ya karim So Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, last time we looked at <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> telling us he doesn't need our worship, right? And he doesn't need, uh, he has no need for us. Rather, there's no need for uh, us to do what he commands. It's not an intrinsic need of his. Rather, what he, he tells us to do is for us, so we may benefit. And, and then, you know, you know, People choose then. People choose to do good. People choose to do bad. So he said to his messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, say to them, "I'malu ala makanatikum. Do, do everything you can. Do your worst. In the amil, right? I am doing it, doing my, uh, you know, everything I can to spread the deen, and they can do whatever they can, they want to to try and oppose it. And what are they going to get out of it? At the end of the day, they're just going to oppose Allah subhanahu wa taala, and they'll just, just, it's going to lead to ultimate failure in this life and failure in the next. And on the day of judgment, they will be full of regrets, regrets and remorse. Like the worst case scenario, if someone can regret something in this life and look back and you know, so I say, oh no, I wish I hadn't done that. But the way it happens there, my God, they will truly regret this. So Allah protect us. So then now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after sh- highlighting, you know, their approach and that they don't stop and they're going to keep doing, you know. Uh, so he said, uh, he tells us now uh, other actions that they, they do, which, you know, are just unfair and unjust. Like whatever they do, it's incorrect, it's invalid. Their approach to religion, even in their own standards, even their own religious practices practices that they make up, they're unfair and unjust. You know, they don't give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his due, right? It's, you know, it's like if you imagine someone who's putting, like for example, a parent. Uh, who has children but he's just constantly unfair and unjust towards one particular child and favoring the others and it's just bad treatment but that's who's created things but here they're talking about Allah the supreme king the ultimate creator of everything and then they make up false gods and then they give their false mythical you know just non-existent gods preferable uh, preferential treatment it's just the height of foolishness right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted this that, you know they, they, because they would attest that Allah is the one who created everything they would agree to that but then they wouldn't give him his due so says وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ مِمَّا ذَرَأَ مِنَ الْحَرْثِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ نَصِيبًا Wow, very eloquent. And فَقَالُوا هَذَا لِلَّهِ بِزَعْمِهِمْ وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا The pagan set aside for Allah uh, a share of the crops and cattle he created, right? Saying this portion is for Allah, so, uh, so they claim, and this one is for our associated god, associate gods. They don't say, yeah, the shuraka, you know, those who associate uh, in divinity with Allah subhanahu wa taala. So it just shows their ignorance. It shows the zulm uh, that they were doing. Zulm, as I said, is either wronging someone or treating something in in other than the, than the way it should be treated. And Allah deserves all reverence and respect, devotion, love, and the they're showing the exact opposite in their behavior. She just shows their, their foolishness, right? As we've seen before, <coughs> they would turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> and worship the idols when things are good, but when things go bad, they they turn to the idols. Uh, sorry, they ignore the idols and go to Allah. Oh Allah, help us. Get, get us out of this predicament. So this is the problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ They've made for Allah a share. Like, firstly, who are they to apportion something? This is a religious practice. Like, for example, um, 
when you sacrifice the action has to be legislated it has to be you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know has to approve an action so he r- r- reveals to us uh, practices and then we do them you can't just make up an act of worship someone decides it's going to be a great act of worship to you know to to hop on one foot you know from you know from one mountain to a particular valley and then uh, you know do a handstand in that valley uh, as a sign of reverence for god no it's not accepted so he says wajalu they made it they don't have any right for this they don't have any right to do this legislation belongs to god so it's wajalu lillahi fa allah just look at the sequence of they've made this no, I have any right for Allah the supreme king he is the legislator he is the one that tells us what to do we can't start you know making stuff up mimma dhara'a from the things that he has created and spread all over the world right uh, and then min bayani explains what has he created al harf crops and uh, well, an'am, these animals, cattle, so it's like here it applies to camels, cows, sheep and goats, right? Nasibam, they've made a share, a nasiban, right? And it doesn't even, from the indefinite, I'd say that it, that it wasn't even a particularly large share, just a paltry share, they made for God. They set this aside for God. When, they set, when, they, when crops grow, they say this is for God. Right, so either so this is the, the scholars of tafsir have differing uh, views on this, and <clears throat> so either so for example, they set the share aside. What what would they do? That maybe they leave it, let it just rot or whatever, or they give it as Abu Saud says uh, that um, they say this share belongs to Allah, but obviously because uh, Allah is uh, you know um, perfect, you know Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah is transcendent beyond, beyond His creation. Uh, he, you know, He's not in a place as we see, like in the verse of Surah Al-Hajj, "Lantanallahu uh, wala dimauha." That the flesh, nor the blood of the animals, reaches God. And I saw a non-Muslim saying, "Well, see, what's the point doing it? No, walakin yinalahu taqwa minkum." But rather the God-fearingness that makes you go uh, and do these actions and obey God that reaches him meaning he accepts the action and so he doesn't have no need of the physical thing rather it's the act of the sacrifice that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so what happens he goes <coughs> they go and they take say this is God's share and then they go give it in in the uh, to, to poor people or uh, they feed guests with it or what they think God would want them to do they have that right and then for the idols they would have a separate share for the idols and then uh, and then so what would happen is those uh, is that they'd get luxurious gold and whatever stuff they'd gift to their idols wherever they kept their idols in those buildings and their luxury you know kind of uh, adornment around the idol and the, the custodians of the idols would take their share and they, they'd say look you know they'd spend that money on themselves these sorts of things so they'd make a share for god and a share for the idols so he says um he says uh for callus then they say they claim it's just a claim, there's no reality behind this. Hada lillahi bizamihim. So they say this belongs, this is for God. Bizamihim with their false claim. That's their false claim. Right? Wahada uh, li shurakaina. What they actually say is this is for God and this is for our partner, uh, the other gods that they worship. This is for Allah and this is for the other idols. But he says for the share that they sing about God bizamihim, it indicates as Abu Saud says that it's not even accepted. They've made it up. God doesn't accept it. Allah doesn't accept it. And there's no reward that they can expect for it on the day of judgment, right? You know, uh, what they're going to get for it? Nothing, right? But it's just because they've abandoned the, the teachings that God sent through uh, through the Prophet Ibrahim and uh, the Prophet Ismail, alayhi salatu wasalam. And then what the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, came with, they ignored that. So, what do they want? Wahada ali shuraka ina, and they say, and this is for our idols. What do the idols deserve? They don't even exist. It's not a reality. They just, you know, they're just names, right? With no reality behind them. So this is what he says, and then, <clears throat> and then he says, "For man li shuraka'ihim, 
فَلَا يَصِلُ إِلَى اللَّهِ uh, So yet the portion their associate gods, uh, the portion of their associate gods is not shared with Allah. وَمَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ فَهُوَ يَصِلُ إِلَى شُرَكَائِهِمْ And what is for God, and the, while Allah's portion is shared with their associate uh, gods. سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ What unfair judgment. So what's he saying? فَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ So that which they say a portion for their idols, this amount that's meant to go to their idols, it goes to their idols. And the, you know, the temples they made and then the, the, the custodians of, of these idols, they take it and they did use that, they'd use that meat and they'd whatever, eat it, sell it, whatever, right? And the same with the crops. And uh, f um, so they'd never g uh, give any of that to w to the portion that they're saying this is for Allah, right? That share is almost like it's sacred, it's going to their idols. Well, um, Yet, the, uh, it's just, you know, it's just horrible, the action, right? Yet, you know, if you're going to make up an act of worship, you know, at least be fair about it, right? They're not even doing that. What, and, and, and that which is for God, the share that they've apportioned for God, it goes to their idols. So, um, <clears throat> if they seem like, oh, the idols have got something less, okay, we'll take it from uh, Allah's share and we'll give it to them. Or, if the crop's not great, they'll give... Um, They'll distribute it and then they'll think, eh, you know, uh, this is not a great batch. <clears throat> we'll give the bad stuff to God and we'll take the good share from, that they appointed to, for Allah. We'll give it to the idols, these sorts of things. Or they'll just take from what uh, was meant to be given to Allah and just give it away to the idols, right? Or whatever those causes were. And it just shows, <clears throat> excuse me, it just shows bad judgment. It just shows that they're very... <clears throat> perspective the action all of it is um, a problem like it's just wrong it's not fair let alone the fact that it's false it's not rooted in reality it's not uh, in, it doesn't have god's approval right or his approbation on this matter it's just not uh, it's just not right not valid as an action they made it up they abandoned his religion what he taught and what he commanded and then they made something up and then they weren't even fair in that so he says Sa'a ma, ma yakumun Sa'a there's a number of ways of expressing this but you know su is something that is just horrible disgusting it's just just really really bad and it says Sa'a it's, uh, this word is used according to some of the ulama to express shock like it's just shocking how bad their judgment is like what what they their judgment in the way they do things what they decide and how they see things and what they choose to do is just horrible what is the point like what they keep doing and what their their approach is their habitual approach what they do over and over is just it's just horrible it's just not right it's not fair it's not fitting it's not suited to how someone should be with god and this is on top of it being uh, a practice they fabricated and that's on top of them actually ignoring all the truth of his oneness and worshiping others besides him a'udhu billah allah protect us so then he says wa kadhalika zayyana and I believe it's the Dra of the Qiraat, but I'll just go through the uh, our Qiraat. Uh, Zayyana, Zuyina, uh, the Qiraat. Zayyana, li kathirin min al mushrikina, qatla awladihim shurakauhum. Likewise, the pagans' evil associates have made it appealing to them to kill their own children. Right? Why? Li yurduhum wa li yalbisu alayhim dinahum only leading to their destruction as well as confusion in their faith walaw sha allahu ma fa'aluhu fadharhum wa ma yaftarun had it been allah's will they would not have done such a thing so leave them and their falsehood so what saying so just like <coughs> just like there's been an injustice and wrongdoing here where They've made up these laws. They've got these false gods, uh, treating them as, you know, treating the idols as 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 as, as divine beings. <clears throat> in the same way, in the same shocking, horrible way, in that same way, uh, the the idols, the shuraka, not just the idols here, the jinn that they used to worship as well, uh, adorned 
made beautiful zayyana tazyin is to make something look nice and beautiful um what, what happened let me just summarize it first that they used to worship idols and there were some of the sahaba they came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they used to say that you know that the idol used to talk to them and tell them to do certain things and he said it was the shayateen it was the devils of the jinn they were the ones who were speaking to you right so and some people would ally themselves with the jinn and as we talked about in the past so they would <coughs> they would feed them ideas you've had this child and this child is going to do this to you do that to you embarrass you humiliate you you do this and do that and save yourself they would come up with all of these things to trick these people so the idols would make it seemly adorned they'd make it make them think it's a good idea for them to kill their children right and as we know the pagan arabs used to kill their daughters um you know she, maybe she'll go do something that will humiliate us or we'll have to f feed them the the sons can go fight uh, in battles but what the, what do the daughters do these kind of you know jahili attitudes so the the shuraka whom their partners the the people the, the beings who they treat as partners to god um and this can also be other people right as we see with the jewish uh, people that they they treat their rabbis as god because the rabbis who say this is halal making it up on the spot not conveying a ruling given by god but making it up and they say we accept it and they'll do it and this is haram and we accept it and we'll do it well it's, it's different with the, the ulama because what do they do they say this is it and there's a proof and here's the proof the quran sunnah you know qiyas ijma one of, you know the other sources of law and so it's, it's saying this is what we understand to be god's command and here's our proof they would just make it up so here the same thing some people who they would put in this position uh, they treat them like this and especially the, the, the shayateen they'd say yeah you know this is a good practice and do this and do that go kill your children right and so they would actually go and murder their, their young children what are they going to say on the day of judgment some people you know don't have the ble the blessing of children and then these people just go in there and just murdering their children and um Allah says on the day of judgment when the the little girl buried alive is asked for which crime she was killed why is she being asked she didn't do anything because the person who killed her is so disgusting he's not worth even addressing right so this is what happens so the the shuraka the idols and the shayateen uh, made it seem like a great idea for them to kill their children right why liur do whom to destroy them the shayateen don't want their success they don't want them to benefit they want their destruction in the dunya and in the akhirah so so they suffer and they, they they're punished for uh, their crimes iblis you know iblis to, you know the devil doesn't want any human being to succeed he wants everyone with him in hell right and then there's people that march behind him blindly and right? they don't even think about he does he even want good for you a'udhu billah a'udhu billah honestly allah protect us and keep us far away from him and you know his minions and cohorts and so so they want their destruction and uh, this is the ex explicit reason they, they don't have any goodwill towards these people they want them to be destroyed uh, and in order for them to confuse labs means to khalt. the root word means to clothe something when clothing is, is close to your body so if something is close and sometimes it can get mixed right so to, for them to c confuse their religion for them and it's been happening for a while so Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam came and taught them the proper the religion of Ibrahim and what Allah revealed to Ismail and he taught them that and it continued like this and then slowly things started getting changed and you know until the superstitions became truer in their sight than the truth than actual laws and revelations so in this regard <clears throat> they confuse them regarding what's true about their religion and so these people abandoned it and they chose these practices so obviously this would affect the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a he doesn't want people to be punished he wants people to to be saved and to go to paradise he's just such a caring prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and then you know they would do these things and all these social ills and he uh, you know it would affect him right so allah says to him had allah willed they would have done this 
right? But they're doing it because Allah is allowing it, right? Allah can stop them if He wants, one way or another. He can stop them, but He's decided to allow it, and you know, for whom? So He said, leave it. There's wisdom in what Allah does and what He allows to happen, and there's a wisdom that will be manifest. So He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, for whom? Just ignore them, leave them, and leave them to, and whatever. Leave also leave whatever they've made up. The iftira. Uh, from the root word to cut a piece of leather, right, to make a shoe or something, it's, it's a specific cut. So it's like a concocted lie, they knew what they were doing, they made this lie up. So leave them and all that, they're not going to benefit and they're not going to get away from the punishment that they deserve, right. So, A'udhu Billah, Allah protect us. So let's stop here and we'll continue uh, from this point insha'Allah ta'ala wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen